Hi, so um, my name's Hazel Evans and I translate from Danish. Um, today I'm going to be reading from Glenn Beck's uh, Fast Evil, which um, in my translation is probably going to be called The Fathership. I also considered uh, the title Chip of the Old. Um, and it's a sample I worked on, I think, a couple of years ago and have been pitching uh, for a while. And, and recently the UK rights have been acquired by Prototype Publishing. So I'll be translating the whole book very soon. Um, and I'm gonna, well, maybe I should just tell a bit about the book first. It's, a, it's, a, it's an experimental work of autofiction um, in the sense that it's written in several voices um, both Glenn the author adopting several voices but also the the characters involved in the story and the story um, is centered around the suicide of Glenn's father when he was just six years old um, and the sort of after effects of that, but also a lot of exploration of the time leading up to that. Um, and yeah, he brings in um, the voices of his brother and his mother with their diary excerpts or their uh, text exchanges about the book itself. There's a suicide note in the middle of the book. Um, and sometimes these books that do that, they don't work. Um, but for, for this one, it the form is really fitting to the content, the way that it's, it's kind of a, a messy attempt to pull at all these loose threads and kind of find a way to, to make something out of something so incomprehensible. Um, and, and, and it's both in his, his way of structuring the book, but also in the language itself. A lot of the pages grammar is used in this really interesting way to sort of break sentences up. So you've got like a comma between each word. So it makes you hear the words as you read them in this like boom, boom, boom way. And it can be slightly jarring at first, but then when you get into the book, you start hearing things like that and, and maybe even start thinking a bit like that yourself so it becomes this kind of it, it transforms you in the way it's meant to because you're meant to also feel trauma really um and, and glenn is a, is a trained psychologist as well uh before he went on to become an author he's still a practicing psychologist sometimes um but but you can really feel that he has used all of that knowledge he has and channeled it into form and content the way the adult Glenn speaks to child Glenn um, in the book. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to read. I'm not going to read from one of those interesting grammar sections because I think it will be too difficult, but I'm going to read from a section that is um, all in capital letters. It's one of the, the shouting sections in the book um, where we sort of we go away from these scenes of what is happening in the childhood and looking back. And and it's really just an outlet of of sort of calculating anger, trying to figure out logically how this could have happened. Um, sorry, I just had to find my file. Um, and I also found the page, just so you can see it in the book. Um, capital letters, no full stops, and it has this grey background, which is which is one of the other ways um, in the book that is kind of used to differentiate between the, the voices um, that we hear. Um, yes, and this is also going to be a challenging section to read because it really it it's a rant and it should be it should be read in a a, a maybe a male voice uh, shouting uh, sort of breathlessly um, not from a page but 
but from the from the heart, which is how I think it was written. But but you can I'll read it and and hopefully you can just uh, imagine a, an angry male man um, giving a sort of spontaneous speech. Here goes. <clears throat> Meanwhile, what do I want? Greek tragedies, the trauma of others. No, fuck no. I want pain. I want suffering. And I want them in first person, bit by bit, and by the skin of my teeth. I will suffer in a language that will suffer in me. The language and I will destroy each other only, only to rediscover each other, and via each other we will with a newborn's curiosity, discover suffering, and via this suffering, suffer as my dad, we will suffer and suffer, as those who loved him suffered and suffering, as they too suffered, long enough to once and for all be able to speak with the same mouth, we will, the language and I, be able to find out whether his, my dad's, suffering was worthy of death or not, i.e. is our conclusion, yes, without a doubt, then naturally we, we must also take ours, as he took his, because how could we, how could anyone, after having suffered as he did, and declared that suffering unequivocally worthy of death, possibly choose to do anything else? How, tell me how, if we temporarily wish to prolong the suffering, life, if not all the way until death, the unavoidable kind, then at least just like, at all, I think it would be as feared, as expected and as feared, like I said, in spite of everything, the doubt, as to whether, worthy of death or not, we'd end up in, doubt, such that the language and I only then would be able to perceive ourselves as free from having to commit our own otherwise so predetermined suicides, knowing full well, yes, knowing full fucking well, that he too, my dad, could also have perceived himself as free from having to commit his. And I don't know about you, dear readers, what will become of all this, this work, will it, Will it be my one and only, and will it, possibly also at the same time, be accused of having been written in screams and in powerlessness, obviously written in a rush, all this, and will it, might I, too, no matter what, be accused of having wanted to survive, best wishes, children of grief united, by precisely what it is to scream, to powerlessness, to rush, Well, that too can be a way to want to survive, no matter what. That too can be a way to rush it, to scream it all out. All that powerlessness, for fuck's sake, it can also... All that powerlessness, for fuck's sake, it also has to be both to want and to have to, i.e., and possibly without even being able to survive exactly this. And tell, tell me then, how? Yes, how on earth was I supposed to, after having suffered as he did, after having suffered alongside a brother with behavioural difficulties, and a mum who, in order to be a mum, had to numb herself with overtime, etc., overdosing, no, how on earth was I supposed to, after having to become an adult just like that, an adult for whom it was only yesterday that his dad went off to play billiards, who later that same night dared to trust his mum when she said that dad had probably just won, and hung around to be celebrated, and who later still wet the bed and trusted her a little less when instead of immediately going to wash the sheets said that he, the boy, could lie next to her, i.e. on dad's side, into someone who didn't learn much the day the day after other than how to change his own bed sheets, and by the way that all along the world had just been waiting to happen, and I don't really want to talk about it any more, this suffering I've since felt. Tell me then, how was I ever, after having relived everything the child I was had just relived, only to suppress again and again, today and forevermore, once again, bit by bit, and by the skin of my teeth, supposed to be able to love my dad, knowing full well, like I said, condemned to live, knowing that it was fully possible that he too could have perceived himself as free. No, let me know, help me, let me remain in suffering. For so long I've practised being able to recognise myself, and therefore also him, by suffering, worthy of death or not, worthy enough for dad, and worthy enough that he, thinking of his family in the Volvo in the woods in April, a week after I'd just turned five, a week and five years after he had, just after I was born, proposed to mum, and really therefore also to me, still covered in the blood of their dreams, still thought it worthy, death, just so worthy that he, I hope, also had Glenn, who by the way was about to start school at home in his thoughts, was only just about able to come to terms with the hypothetical extent to which his death would affect their, 
our lives, but not, apparently, not with the extent to which his suffering, definitely, would otherwise have come to affect him in life. And that is the, the shouty section. Um, I can also see reading through it that there are, there are some, po some parts where um, I might want to change the rhythm slightly or the line breaks in English uh, to make it actually maybe feel more like that, that spontaneous uh, shout from the heart. So um, happy to have the opportunity to try reading it out now. And um, yeah, I hope it's given you an interesting uh, look into the work of Glenn Beck and um, yeah, looking forward to seeing it published in English sometime soon.